boy. If you were a boy in the 1970s or a girl, I don't know why I said that. If you were a boy or a girl, I don't know else what else you would have been in the 70s. Never mind. <laughs> Well, I found a 1930s made in Japan milk pitcher, but it has a crack on the top. You can see right there. It has a pretty majolica glaze. It is from the 30s and it has that typical made in Japan mark from that era. It's $6 and it's uh, okay, except for that one little crack on the top. A little bit of roughness around the spout. It's okay, but in that condition, I think I'll leave it. I will back up and I'll show you inside of my cart. I found what appear to be two old cellars jars from cellars cabinets, which was a type of a Hoosier cabinet, kitchen cabinet. So popular, as you know, in the 1930s. Well, earlier than that as well. Beautiful old original aluminum lids. Look at that. And then this is the spot where you would put your own sticker to uh, indicate whatever you wanted your contents to be. There's an S on the bottom and uh, see that? Otherwise they're not marked, but there are two of them. And uh, these are quite often in clear glass and they're ribbed. So I run into these every once in a while and they're just nice items from the 1930s. That one also has a nice old original aluminum lid. The lids fit very well. So from the depression era, I think we'll take those. Speaking of the depression, I think you have already spied a popular pattern down here. Uh, old colony or open lace. That's an anchor hocking pattern. Uh, at $9, that's a little too expensive for that bowl, which is not that difficult to find. So we'll just leave that back there on the shelf. And I think I'm gonna keep shopping. Well, here's a series of some old glass, oven glass. What gives it away is that tint. We've talked about that before. But let's look closely at these. This is glass bake, which means it's made by McKee. I like that. Little tiny individual baking dishes. There's another small one. There's one slightly larger with the pebbly bottom and the glass bake name. We'll put these back here. And then this one is pretty. I guess this might dub as a lid no, I guess that's the base. But that has a pretty etch on it there. Similar to sort of like the Philby glass. Made by Hawking. And that one says patented May 27th. Can you see that? Patent date May 27. And I think it says, does it say 1919 on it? Boy, my eyeballs. Patented May 27th of, good heavens, of 19, it might say 1919. That's three dollars and 49 cents, that little baking dish. And then these as well. We know Pyrex came on the scene in 1915 and glass bake not too far after that. That's a piece of Pyrex right there. That's a big piece of Pyrex. Anyway, I'm not so sure about these, about buying these little guys. Oh, I do like this Art Deco meatloaf pan. Oh, I like that little handles. That's only three dollars. Glass bake. 
I suppose it had a lid. I like this. I might like this for myself to cook a meatloaf. Hmm. I think I'm gonna put that in my cart. I don't know about these other ones. I'll think about it. But I might pass on these. 249. That one's probably 249 as well. Well, I don't know. We'll see. Let's keep looking. Wow, look at this. Probably prior to the turn of the century. I don't know how well I'm going to be able to take a look at the back. Well, there's an awful lot of acid damage from the, the wood. See, that's the old original backing here, which was done in wood before they did it in cardboard. And the acid from the wood seeps into the paper. It can be conserved. You know, you can, if it's a valuable print, you can, you can do something about that. Anyway, we all love dogs. $25. It's in an oak frame. And it says, a credit to his family. And I'm going to try to get you to see that it's a family of pups and he has caught, I guess he's caught a rat or some something he's caught, bringing it back to the other pups. That's a cute old print. I don't know that I want to pay $25 for it. I suppose I would if I were going to hang it up at home. Stanley Berkeley is the publisher, I guess. And then over here it says, I'll let you read it because I don't know that I can read it. Yeah. Well, we'll just put it back right here. Oh, gosh. Get back up there. Move up.
We call it emergency steak. And it's just as tasty and tender and appetizing as any tenderloin or porterhouse. Serve it sizzling hot from the broiler or pan, attractively garnished with green parsley or green carrot tops or celery tops, and a few bright red radishes as a bit of color in contrast to the juicy brown steak. No one could ask for a more delicious dinner meat. Really, everyone who's tried this emergency steak is crazy about it. Here is the recipe perfected by our staff for six servings. A bride could make half the recipe. Mix together one pound of ground beef or hamburger, one half cup milk, One cup of Wheaties. Oh, let's take a look at this lamp. Mm-hmm, this is a possibility. Now, I haven't even picked it up yet. I just spied it from a distance, and it looks like it has been altered over the years. But can it be restored? Let's see if there are any breaks in the onyx. The onyx is not chipped or cracked. That brand new socket was replaced, and of course the cord, and it looks like we could probably clean up this pierced metal bottom. Mm. Oh, I don't know that I want to pay $24 for it. Do I want to pay $24 for that? Good grief, goodwill. You know, that's nice. Now, that's restorable. All right, let me put that back down and let you look at it. But see, folks, you know, here's the thing, and this is what my business brain has to do. <clears throat> it's a $24 lamp here in the store. Now, if I, I let you look at it, go ahead and scan up. All right, it's pretty. But I've got to consider the time and effort that goes into the restoration of it. So I'm going to want to replace the socket and I'm going to want to rewire it and I've got to clean. I've got to put about an hour's worth of work into it. Okay, so I have to say what's an hour of my professional time to restore this lamp and get it into condition. And then I also have to consider when I sell it the amount of time and effort it will take me to pack it and uh, ship it wouldn't be too horrible but we're already sitting at $24 and in my mind I say what would I have to sell it for to make it profitable for the business that's what you have to do see a lot of people just they see the price and they go oh yeah get it get it get it but you know I've got to I've got to let it marinate because there's the cost of doing business, and in business, time is money. So, would it be profitable for me at that price? I don't know. I don't know. I kind of am going to walk away, I think. You know, I'll continue to think about it, but I think my mind is made up. Okay, so, you know, I've been missing for a while because I haven't felt well. And yes, I know. Just be quiet. So I haven't been out in like 10 days. So I finally feel well enough to go out. And what happens, I run into one of the Revive It sisters. Now, you have a show. You have your own channel. You do, yes. So you might know the Revive It sisters who live in Cinnamon. Cinnamon. See, and I came in, and I hear I'm trying to find stuff. Somebody comes up behind me. I already found all the good stuff. That only happens in Jersey. I said I already found all the good stuff. I know, I'm just, I'm just playing. <laughs> so you are, where's the other sister? She's at work. She's at work. Well, so are we. Yes. This is work. I'm on my break, so I have a four hour break. Okay. I drive a school bus. Okay. So, so I, on the four hour break, all right. yeah. so I should just get in my car and leave because you've got all the good stuff. <laughs> well, I don't know. <laughs> there's, 
Jersey well, I, Gypsy. I don't know Jersey Gypsy. I'm sorry. And here we are taking up all the space. Oh, and we got all the good stuff. I she did. Go to the next I don't Adiola. know. I don't know Jersey Gypsy. <laughs> we got all the good stuff. They got all the good stuff. See, and I bring my own cart. She brings her own cart. All right, I checked Let's get out, out of this so aisle. Well, I know the lighting's bad because I'm um, yeah. <laughs> filming into a window, so there's not much I can do about that. Well, I guess there is. I can move the doggone thing. Okay, let's move it. It's just a really nice Torshi air lamp, which I'm not gonna buy. I got about 10 of these in my basement. Uh, look at that shade, and it's $40. Nice, that's an unusual shade with the roses on it. I like that. And then this one is, uh, looks like it's original factory painted with brass here. And then as we come down here, this is like an early type of a plastic and it warps. Sometimes these light up. There might be a light bulb in there because when they don't use stone and they use this fake celluloid -y, plastic -y stuff, um, there's often a light bulb and then these will light up on the bottom, which is kind of neat. So that's nice, but no interest in purchasing it. Oh, super fantastic. You may or may not know, I have a nice collection of Crooksville Rust Bouquet. That's the name of this pattern. And I happened to pick up several pieces of it years ago, and I've just kept a hold of it. So I'm actually trying to put together, oh, there's another one. Oh my goodness. Two covered casseroles. Oh, this is fantastic. Okay, am I gonna buy both of them? Oh, I might. Well, anyway, um, it's, Bake in Crooksville ware made in the USA. This is probably well, not probably. It's a it's a 1940s pattern. Might have come out in the late 30s. And I'll, yeah, one of these days I'll show you the collection. I've got I'm working on I think a six piece place setting of it. So it's nice that I can also get pieces of uh, uh, bakeware to go with it. So there's one, happy day, happy day. Now that's attached to a dinner plate and I need dinner plates. So I'm probably gonna go ahead and buy both of these covered covered dishes, even though that's got a little bit of crazing on the top. I can deal with that. Okay, let's put this in the, in the cart. And I wonder if there's more of it in here. There's probably more of it in here. Hey, there's the Anchor Hawking Manhattan vase. Now, how do we know it's the original and not the reproduction? Because it's got the boop, 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 boop at the bottom. The, well, again, I shouldn't say reproduction. How do we know it's not Park Avenue from the 80s? Because that vase goes all the way to the floor without any, or all the way to the tabletop without any of these little bubbles at the bottom. So that's an original one, but it's got a whack on one of the feet. So that's a no-no. No, 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 no. Leave that right there. I did find, actually, I'm still, I'm actually still looking in the clear glass. I think I found a nice old, let's get this guy out here. I think we're gonna buy this one. That's a pretty one and it's an old one. It's $8, but I'm thinking, oh boy, somebody's gonna love to put some type of a, Christmas salad in that. So let me put that right back down in the cart and see what else I can see. Ooh, there's Hocking Pineapple Vase. Well, it sure is nice to be back, everyone. <laughs> and uh, I am sitting here in the parking lot and i'm now going to show you the things that i found some of the things of course you already saw when i was in the store shopping two of these 1930s kitchen jars <coughs> from a seller's cabinet with nice original uh aluminum lids they were four dollars each and I won't show you the other one because it's a duplicate you also saw me find two of the Crooksville rust bouquet covered casserole dishes here's one and then the second one is back there and it has a uh, dinner plate taped onto the bottom of it 
I will be happy to show you at some point what it looks like on the dining room table. I certainly at this point think I have a place setting for four and I'm working on enough to serve six people. So I hope the, you can see it's a mixture of autumn uh, flowers. It's a decal and then there's sort of a Della Robbia pattern around the outside of embossed autumn fruits. And there's the Crooksville. I think it's upside down. I don't have these cover, covered casseroles, so it's nice to find some uh, serving pieces. And then I don't think you saw that I did find a little uranium, um, well, a green depression glass divided dish, which has uranium in it. And uh, that's going to be uh, from the 1930s. There aren't any chips or cracks on that. It's in really good condition. And I did pay $5 for it. Uh, so let's see what to do with that. Look at this. Probably a little wooden napkin holder for the little small square, like cocktail napkins. Has a deco look to it. It's made of uh, mixed wood walnut on the sides with a deco design and a floral decal, decal on that side. It's 350. So that would look nice on the breakfast table with uh, napkins in it. And then uh, look at this beautiful teapot. Oh, what a nice glaze. Mm -hmm. And also um, a pretty decal. It's in excellent condition. The quality is fantastic. And when we look at the bottom, we see drip a drop. Coffee pot made by Foreman Brothers Incorporated, Brooklyn, New York. And there's a patent number on it there. So similar to drip -a later when you took the top off, there would have been a chrome or aluminum attachment that would sit on there. And they're almost, almost always missing. You can find them. I've got one floating around at the house, I think. Um, so you'd put the coffee grounds or the tea leaves in there, pour the hot water in and it would drip in. And then you put the lid on the top. But that's a nice piece, probably from the 30s or the 40s in really good condition and it has a very nice glaze on it and then here are these six little um, frosted and gold striped cocktail glasses that will 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 match these up with uh, with a cocktail shaker ouch and then a very nice uh, pattern glass compote, a nice big one. Have to clean it. The condition is excellent. This is a hundred years old or so. Um, and I can imagine somebody using this for a, a wonderful dessert at Christmas time or a fruit bowl. So we'll have that coming up in an auction. I didn't show you, I did buy the glass bake. Um, Art Deco sort of meatloaf pan, which I might keep. Uh, I didn't buy the other glass baked pieces. And then, boy, if you were a boy in the 1970s or a girl, I don't know why I said that. If you were a boy or a girl, I don't know else, what else you would have been in the 70s, never mind. You will remember these. I certainly do because they were in my home as a decoration when I was a boy and these are dated <coughs> 19 well we saw in the video and now I can't so they're Bystel and it's 1973 on these two I did buy these they're in really nice condition somebody would probably want to recreate their 1970s Halloween decorations. I don't guess that these are reproductions. Uh, 
I don't have any reason to believe that they are since they're, they have the Bystel mark and they are dated 1973. I certainly remember them from the 70s. Excellent condition on those. And I think uh, that, might, that might be it. You know, I really had to... The dog print was nice. The lamp was nice. But again, I would have spent $25 for each one of those. And as I said in the video, it's all, there's always a bit of risk. And um, they were nice pieces and th there was profit in them both. But you do have to decide when, when you're in, in, in a store like that. You say, well, how many projects do I already have? How much profit do I think is in those pieces? What's going to be involved in the packing and the shipping? And do I really want to mess with it right now? And so sometimes you just leave things behind, um, which I know drives a lot of you crazy, but I can't take everything home. And uh, I just decided to leave those there. So someone will find them, no doubt, and appreciate them and hopefully add them to their, their collections. It was really fun to meet one of the Revive It sisters in the thrift shop and the other Jersey girl. I didn't know her. Um, I think I've seen the Revive It sisters do a couple of live sales with D and then they do them on their own. I'm gonna put the link to their channel in my box below if you're interested. You know, check them out. Um, they're nice, nice ladies, and they live in Cinnaminson, New Jersey. I'm pointing because it's um, Cinnaminson is a, a town here in the southern in, in southern New Jersey, and that's its name, Cinnaminson. So check them out if you get a chance. It was nice to meet them, um, and I guess that's going to be it for now. Um, it's nice to be back. Thanks, everyone. I took some time off. I was not feeling well, and I am getting ready to get back in the saddle again. I'll have two live sales the last two Monday nights in October. So this is, I think, Thursday when this goes out or Wednesday. And then we'll see you for the last two Monday nights in October. And everything is in the mail, finally. And I apologize. It's hard when it's a one-man show because if there are problems and life happens. Uh, I try not to, to be late with shipping, but this time I was, and I apologize for that, but it's all in the mail. So if you've been biting your nails thinking, I wonder what happened to that dude, don't worry, it's coming. And um, thank you for your patience and thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed today's little mini shop along. We'll have some more coming up. Uh, in the next few days, I hope. And then if, if not, I will see you next Monday night and then the Monday night after that uh, in October. Okay, that's it for now. Thanks for watching. I'm Scott from the Old Curiosity Shop. Wait for the cat. And so long for now.